Ignition running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Good evening. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here. News 95.5 AM 750 WSB Atlanta's Evening News. The phone number 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. We've got old Kavanaugh angle here in Georgia. We're, We're almost out of the Kavanaugh woods. But the Democrats have decided to nationalize Brett Kavanaugh to try to fire up angry women. Again, I think if the progressive movement had more moms and less bitter, angry, childless feminists, uh, they might realize this isn't a good idea. Um, But nationwide, they're trying to fire up uh, women and convince them that every conservative man is a potential predator. And it, it has trickled out across the progressive movement, and it's moving into Georgia. And, well, the lieutenant governor candidate for the Georgia Democrat, Sarah Riggs Amico, was in LJ, Georgia, and she started this, and the Democrats picked it up. I got this audio for you. She was actually called on video, and I've taken the audio out of the video to for you to hear. Real quick, though, uh, New Hope Baptist Church in Greshamville, Georgia, near Madison. They invited me. My buddy Andy who goes there invited me to hang out with them overnight Saturday and roast a whole hog or roast a whole pig. It was fantastic time. Thank you very much to them. Uh, I wound up leaving about two o'clock in the morning and, but stayed until then it was a really cool. I gotta, I gotta build one of these and, and smoke a whole hog nonetheless. Okay. Let me play you Sarah Riggs Amico. She was in LJ. She was caught on video saying this. I always call it like, you know, the most undervalued office in state government here in Georgia. Um, many people understand that, God forbid you ever need it, there is succession. So if the governor is out of the state, you're acting governor, or if, God forbid, they're removed from office, um, you become the governor in succession. Uh, and I would say normally that that's probably a very unlikely event. But let's be honest, if we got if we had Governor Brian Kemp in sort of the Me Too era, I'm, I'm not sure that... Guaranteed he'll make it four years. Uh, you, you got that? Yeah. In the Me Too era, there's no guarantee. See, because Brian Kemp may be a sexual predator just like Brett Kavanaugh. That's what she's getting at here. Now, don't tell me this wasn't coordinated because this morning the Democratic Party in Georgia held a press conference to basically say that um, Brian Kemp would favor sexual predators over victims. Y'all... They're going off the deep end on this. And and no, let, let me give you the actual title. I had to pull up the email. I thought I had it. Here it is. The actual, this is the actual purpose of the press conference to quote, highlight Brian Kemp's record of failing to protect and support victims of rape and sexual assault. That was their, that was their press conference this morning to highlight Brian Kemp's record of failing to protect and support victims of rape and sexual assault. This comes on the heel of Sarah Riggs Amico, the Georgia Democratic lieutenant governor candidate, saying that in the Me Too era, Brian Kemp may not survive four years, so you need a Democrat lieutenant governor. See, this is their strategy. If you're a Republican man, you are a sexual predator like Brett Kavanaugh. And if you're a Republican woman like Susan Collins, you cover up for those sexual predators. That is where they're headed now. This is the Democrats' closing argument in Georgia. You you know, it should be offensive. If if you're a mom, if you're a mom and you have sons, it should really offend you that the Democrats have taken this all men are sexual predators angle. It should really offend you that the Democrats' lieutenant governor candidate would be out there saying, you know, Brian Kemp in the Me Too era, he may not survive four years. And the implications are he he cheats on his wife. He's a sexual predator. He may have sexual harassment. He may have sexual assault scandals. He may have affairs in office and get caught. He can't keep it in his pants. That, that This is the Democratic argument. You can't trust me. They say that Donald Trump is dividing the country. Here come the Democrats to double up on what they say Donald Trump has done and divide us Republican, Democrat, male, female, boy, girl, and force everyone to pick a side as opposed to saying, you know what? Individuals should be judged on their own merits. We should not say all men are bad or all Republican men are bad or all conservative men are bad or all conservative judges are bad because of something that might have happened to one person at some other point. To go after the Brett Kavanaugh thing and now to amp it up against Brian Kemp and say, oh, he he might just be like Brett Kavanaugh. 
Every single one of you should be offended by that. And it's a hell of a closing argument for the Democrats to make as well. Vote for us. The other side are a bunch of sexual predators. Not exactly the the warm and fuzzy message that the Democrats might want to close on here in Georgia. Now, my goodness, folks, a hurricane is coming. Can you, it's just, we're, we're October 8th. The cold weather is finally arriving and the hurricane looks like it's going to help bring it in. Uh, God bless the hurricane. I've got to go to Dallas on Thursday to preach and I had to get my flight moved to the afternoon to let this thing have a chance to roll through. So I'm not driving to the airport in tropical storm rain. Nonetheless, uh, more on that in a bit. But so we have this thing uh, with the Democrats now attacking Brian Kemp, but let me let me lay out more specifics for you. They say Brian Kemp was lax on a massage therapist, owner of a massage therapy group. It was actually the regulators. It wasn't Brian Kemp. They're imputing regulators to Brian Kemp because it was the Secretary of State's office. And they're also misstating the facts you should know. But they got to go through a second degree. They, they got to go through other people and say these people screwed up and it was Brian Kemp's fault because they screwed up. Let me tell you what Stacey Abrams did. There was legislation in the state legislature to fight human trafficking in Georgia. It would allow jail time for people. You know, a lot of times it's the women are the ones who are punished, and and oftentimes they're actually being held hostage. This was the reason I ran for office, you should understand. Uh, When I ran for office and got elected in 2007 in Macon, it was because of all of the Asian themed massage parlors in our county, uh, in Bibb County at the time. And I realized they weren't open in the day and they had crowds at night and started wondering why and discovered an activist uh, up in Gwinnett County who was having a similar thing. And, and the Justice Department under the Clinton administration put out a report and flagged a lot of these businesses as fronts for the Asian mafia conducting human trafficking, often with kidnapped women who are put into these places and told uh, that the Americans will punish them. And if they try to escape, their families will be killed by the mob. It was horrific. And I started working to pass legislation to crack down on human trafficking. And Karen Handel and then Brian Kemp were both very, very helpful to me trying to make that happen and get that done. Meanwhile, Burt Reeves in the state legislature tried to do a legislative maneuver to actually up the punishments because it, I, I said it was typically the women who were doing it who were getting arrested, the, the people who were the fronts for the companies uh, and, and rounding up the women and getting them to do, they could walk off. And so he passed legislation, drafted legislation to punish the traffickers. And Stacey Abrams walked off the floor to avoid voting for it. And she said it was because she didn't like the mandatory minimums in the legislation. Well, Burt Reeves worked to address her concerns. And she walked off the floor a second time so she wouldn't have to vote for it. Every other Democrat in the House of Representatives in Georgia was willing to oppose or willing to support legislation to fight human trafficking. And Stacey Abrams wouldn't. That's not a two degrees away. That's not somebody did something and therefore it's Brian Kemp's fault. That is Stacey Abrams herself opposed legislation to fight human trafficking. And she didn't want to be on record opposing it. So she just conveniently walked off the floor of the state house when the vote was held. And she did it twice. One time you can say she had something come up. Two times, that's not a coincidence. That's a pattern there. She walked off the floor to avoid having to fight that. And now here come the Democrats today saying Brian Kemp is going to be the one bad for rape victims and and survivors of sexual assault. Really? He's the one who's going to be bad? I think they may need to reconsider that. And this whole talking point that Brian Kemp, he may just have something in his closet. That's what the Democrats were reduced to here. Fear-mongering, rumor, and smear. They did it to Brett Kavanaugh. They're going to do it to Brian Kemp. And they're going to do it to every other Republican they can between now and November. Lying and smearing and making suggestions, accusations in the form of suggestions that maybe he's done something to women. Really, really gross. What would it look like if we all listened more 
Listening to audiobooks motivates us and inspires us, even brings us closer together. There's no better place to listen than Audible because now Audible members get even more. Exclusive audio fitness programs, audiobooks, Audible originals, and more. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now, with Audible Originals, the selections has gotten even more custom with content made for members. Every month, Audible members get one credit good for any audiobook they choose, plus two Audible Originals from a changing selection that they can't get anywhere else. They also get access to audio fitness and health workouts created exclusively for Audible, plus... Your books are yours to keep. With Audible, you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. Didn't like your audiobook? Exchange it. No questions asked. Start a 30-day trial and get your first audiobook free. Go to audible.com slash Eric, remember E-R-I-C-K, or text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 500-500. You can do it with audiobooks. You can read audiobooks, except you listen. You don't actually read. Well worth it, particularly if you're stuck in the car, you got a long road trip. Audible is the way to go. So start your 30-day trial by going to audible.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K, or text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Eric, or text Eric to 500-500 to get started. It's 26 after the hour. The phone number, 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. Y'all, I, listen, I got to tell you just real quick, I was so delighted. So uh, the guy I follow on Instagram, he follows me, at Farm Heritage is his Instagram account. Uh, his name is Andy. And he listens to the show and he knows that I have wanted to do a whole hog horse. I want to learn how you build the pit and all. And he reached out to me about a month and a half ago and said, our church does one. They have homecoming um, the Sunday before Columbus Day every year. And so he invited me out there. It's outside of Madison, uh, Greshamville. It's not really on the map per se. New Hope Baptist Church. We stayed up all night Friday or Saturday night. I I cannot tell you the amount of food that they were cooking. The number, they had a, a whole pig and then they had a bunch of um, Boston butts and several hams. And then they were making two giant cauldrons, literal cauldrons of Brunswick stew. And it was just, I did not get to stay the entire night. I uh, was there until two o'clock in the morning, saw them changing out. And they used charcoal. They didn't use hardwood, uh, which was fine with me. Saw the pit. The pit was pre-built because they do it every year. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, really, really nice people out there at New Hope Baptist Church. And I just, it was a, it was something to remember. And now I really want to do one of these myself. I really want to go buy cinder blocks and build one of these and smoke a whole pig. I've been inspired. When we come back, the Democrats are smoking Michael Avenetti. It is 39 after the hour. You're going to want to stay with us because we have a hurricane coming. My kids are so excited. They're off today and tomorrow uh, for their fall break. And I'm guessing they're going to have off Wednesday as well. Uh, Now, Michael Avenetti, he is the gift that keeps on giving the Republicans. Uh, I I got a lot of audio I want to play for you guys tonight. Um, First of all, we should re-savor this, please. This vote, the ayes are 50. The nays are 48. The nomination of Brett M. Kavanaugh of Maryland to be an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States is confirmed. Boom. And all the protesters yelling and screaming uh, while the vote was happening. Now, here's Chuck Todd had his meet the press panel on MSNBC. I got a lot of MSNBC audio for you, these people melting down, but this Todd and, and, and his panelists, listen to this conversation. Michael Abbott is probably the best thing to happen <laughs> yes. to Brett Kavanaugh, isn't yes. it? I mean, all these Democrats that have been flirting with him, they've got to really be embarrassed Look how quickly, now, when right? Susan Collins in that speech got to the sexual assault allegation portion of the speech, look how quickly she moved to the Michael Avenatti role in all of this. If this had been something over the last week to 10 days where you had the testimony from Christine 
Hakeem Blasey Ford. Right. You had the questions that arose from that, and that was the issue that was being litigated in sort of the court of public opinion when it came to sexual assault. I wonder if this would have played out any differently than the Michael Avenatti circus comes to town, and it, it just changes the nature of the debate. It changes the terms of the debate. It, it diluted Dr. Ford, whatever you might think. It did sort of... Something about Michael Avenatti might have well, cheapened, it, it, it was also cheapened the Deborah, whole thing. It was also Deborah Ramirez's allegation, which, you know, by her, by her own account, wasn't initially certain it was Brett, decided it was Brett after thinking about it. The New York Times, to their credit, wouldn't publish it. You know, 20 years ago, no major news publication would have even published those second allegations. Um, her, the second allegation or the third al allegation. And so we are now in a, in a different place in this country. Uh, where the message out of Me Too, which has very important, a very important message for society, though, has become conflated with politics, which is that by any means necessary, we can score a political win. And, you know, that last comment there, that it goes back to the Sarah Riggs Amico, the Democrat running for lieutenant governor in Georgia, who's saying that there may be a there there with Brian Kemp. She's got no evidence and no proof. But in the Me Too era, he, you may need a Democrat lieutenant governor. It's, it's all implied in, in a character attack. Y'all, if you go back two weeks ago, go two weeks ago on this program, I told you I talked to a Republican senator who believed Christine Blasey Ford and was ready to throw in the towel. And then I told you, I talked to him after the Ramirez allegations came out, and he had a complete change of heart that those allegations proved to him this was all a Democrat attack. And that they were going to make anything and everything up to take out Brett Kavanaugh. If anything, uh, the Republicans should send a thank you note to Ronan Farrow and, and Jane Mayer for running that story, which then propelled Michael Avenatti to come out. Because the Ramirez allegations were no more credible than the Swetnick allegations. They were even less credible than Ford's allegations, which were already in and of themselves not credible. She had no witnesses. I, I see people say it all the time. The, the FBI refused to interview the witnesses. No, no. The FBI interviewed everyone who was named as a witness. They just didn't interview the people who said years later they heard about it. That's not a witness. Those people aren't witnesses. Their testimony cannot be used in the court of in a court of law. I, I, do you understand what hearsay is? Do, do you under, I mean, lawyers talk about hearsay all the time. But do you understand it? Well, we should spend just a second on this to understand what was at stake here, what was at play here with the Democrats and why they're calling these people witnesses when they're not. You know, if you've ever watched Judge Judy, if you've ever watched Judge Judy and, and someone says, well, so-and-so told me, she immediately says, I, 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 don't, I don't want to know what they said to you. What happened to you? What she's doing without saying it, because this isn't a real legal setting with lawyers, is she's saying that's hearsay. I don't want to hear a hearsay. What is hearsay? Hearsay is you heard someone else say something. That means you're not actually a witness. There is an exception to hearsay, and that is if, if someone tells you something and it's to their detriment— well, then one of the exceptions to hearsay is um, the that the truth of the thing asserted works against them. So if you if you tell someone you stole money, then that person potentially, particularly if you're dead, uh, that person can say, yes, he told me he stole the money. But generally, you're not allowed to make a statement on the truth of the matter asserted. Uh, you're not allowed to, to make a statement, say, Christine Blasey Ford told me he was sexually harassed or told me Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her. That's hearsay. That's You're taking her statement as the truth of the matter asserted. And you're not allowed to do that. See, a witness is someone who actually saw the event. And you can't have a hearsay witness. So when you have a trial, you want the people who experienced the incident the people who witnessed the incident. You don't want the people who say, well, five years later, she told me this thing. That's hearsay. It doesn't matter what she told you. What did you actually see? And that's what these Democrats are doing now. It's, it's very Orwellian. They're trying to redefine what a witness is because they don't have any witnesses. So a corroborating witness is now someone who you told 10 years later that this thing happened or 20 years later that this thing happened. 
I mean, with Deborah, with um, Christine Blasey Ford, it was uh, something that happened in 1982, and it was 2012 when she says it was the first time she spoke about it. Well, those people in 2012 aren't witnesses. And same with Deborah Ramirez. No one who was actually at the event or any of those dormitory parties recalls this incident. The people who are actually there are the witnesses. No one recalls it. There are other people who say, well, I remember her telling me something about something at some point that I think was about him, but that's not a witness. And so the Democrats have to redefine these things. And again, this helped Kavanaugh. It wasn't just Michael Avenetti helping Brett Kavanaugh. It was Ronan Farrow and Jane Mayer helping him as well. Because when they came out with Deborah Ramirez, a story that was so preposterous that even the New York Times that hates Brett Kavanaugh wouldn't run the story. Well, that was a big red flag to several senators. One in particular I talked to who was ready to tell the president to withdraw Brett Kavanaugh. He's like, whoa, 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 hang on a second. This is clearly Democrat dirty tricks here. They really helped Kavanaugh. They overplayed their hand. It is 55 after the hour. Real quick, this just happened. Uh, the president coming back. Um, Taylor Swift jumping into politics. What do you have to say to her? And what did she say? Taylor Swift. Bill Bredesen over Blackbird. Don't march to Blackburn. You know, well, Marsha Blackburn is doing a very good job in Tennessee. She's leading now substantially, which she should. She's a tremendous woman. I'm sure Taylor Swift has nothing or no, doesn't know anything about her. And uh, let's say that I like Taylor's music about 25% less now, okay? There you go. Likes her music about 25%. Like, listen, I, there's no reason, I think, to get worked up about uh, a, a musical artist liking a Democrat. I, I'm always surprised when they turn out to be conservative. I never expected Taylor Swift to be conservative. Uh, my daughter's a huge fan, and I think as far as entertainers go, she's a fairly decent role model, but I don't care what her politics are. Uh, the thing, though, that I find very funny is that one of the reasons that she opposes Marsha Blackburn is in, in her little post on Instagram or whatever is is the Brett Kavanaugh nomination. But Phil Bredesen, who's the former governor, there. Uh, he supports Brett Kavanaugh. Not only that, he's involved in a scandal where it appears his office covered up uh, sexual assault allegations or sexual harassment allegations when he was governor of Tennessee. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here. Eight after the hour. Atlanta's Evening News. The phone number 404-872-0750. 1-800-WSB-TALK. I want to begin with two audio clips. First of all, there is Jonathan Carl was talking to Shauna Thomas of Vice News. And I want you to listen to this clip. From ABC's, this is this week with George Stephanopoulos. He was filling in. Uh, Jonathan Carl was for George. Listen to this. Vice News actually spent a lot of time with the protesters over yes. this past week. We saw the president say these are professional protesters, paid by George Soros, et cetera, et cetera. What? 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 Who were these people? What was so going on? A lot of them were were normal people who are mad. We. We hung out with a group from Alaska who was very specifically talking to Lisa Murkowski. Um, a lot of them were Native Americans, which also played into Lisa Murkowski's decision. They actually felt a lot of respect for her because she brought them into their office. Um, she had a real conversation with them. And we also saw people who were organized. And that moment with Jeff Flake on the Hill, we talked to one woman who works for Ultraviolet, who was paid. She helped steer people in the right ways to be able to, to confront senators. So there were paid... There were people who were paid by organizations organizations like Ultraviolet to to try to harness that energy in a way that would make the viral moments that we ended up seeing. So Rachel So there were paid organizers working to generate viral moments or, or moments where they could get it to a sympathetic member of the media to say it was viral. That was going on. Well it, part of the problem is that while I, I am very much of the opinion that a large number of leaders in the Senate on the Democratic side and among progressive activists really don't believe Brett Kavanaugh did it. They've convinced a lot of people that Kavanaugh did do it, who should know better. But they believe these people. They, they ridicule Fox News, and yet they get on MSNBC, 
and and they nod their head along at all this radical progressivism. Ellie Mistel is one of those pundits on uh, MSNBC. He was on TV earlier today, and I want you to listen to this. Listen to the whole clip. About a minute long here, minute minute fifteen seconds long. And this is what these Democratic activists really believe, not just about the president, but about you. The thing about making a deal with the devil is that the devil backs up his bargain, all right? The devil does not welch. Trump has delivered for these people on the things that they care about most. He has delivered racism for these people. He has delivered misogyny for these people. And now he's delivered the Supreme Court for these people, which is something that they've been trying to get for a generation. So then the question now becomes not so much like, oh, will this stick for the Republicans? I think it will stick for the Republicans. This is what they want. The question is, what are the Democrats going to do? Democratic turnout doesn't need to be high for a midterm. It needs to be high for a presidential election. All right. And that's what we're about to see. We're going to see if this if this reign that they now have control over all three branches of government, we're going to see if this reign lasts for 30 days or two years or a thousand year Reich, because that is how that is what these people have set themselves up for. And it's simply a question of whether or not the Democrats are going to join the battle and meet them at the polls. Got that a thousand year Reich. Now, Noah Rothman, who writes for commentary is Jewish, was on that panel. You should have seen his look and he he attempted to respond. And I'll play his audio for just a minute. But you got that. This guy really believes that Republicans they want the racism. They want the misogyny. They want the Nazism. That, that's that's what this guy believes. There is a Democratic fundraiser out there working for a bunch of supposedly moderate Democrats trying to make inroads in conservative areas who on her social media today is saying F the Bible voters after Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, yes, Bible voters she, she is condescending towards. These people really don't like your values. And they're starting to go a little bit crazy. I mean, they've they've already started. The, the Kavanaugh thing just pushed them over the edge. I want to play the Noah Rothman clip. Now, I'm going to play this clip. This is Noah Rothman. But before you hear Noah, you're going to hear Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell was on CBS over the weekend talking about how the left-wing agitators actually unified and fired up the Republican base. And then Noah tries to get in here responding to this guy who did the Thousand Year Reich thing, and then these people have lost their mind. Ironically, the behavior of first uh, Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee and then the overreach of the uh, protesters at the Capitol have actually energized the Republican base. Uh, particularly in the red states where we're trying to pick up seats out across America. So I want to thank I want to thank the uh, other side for the tactics that have allowed us to kind of energize and get involved our own uh, voters. Yeah, thank you and, and he, survivors for telling your he, story. And he's energized now. Yeah, yeah, you hear what he, what the woman the, the crazy woman says? Yeah, thanks to the rape survivors for telling their stories and help unify the Republicans. Well, you know, I think that, frankly, that what he's addressing and the tone and the tenor of this panel is indicative of what we are talking about here. And Susan Collins' speech should be read by everybody very carefully because her speech was about the judge's judicial philosophy, which has been lost over the course of the last two weeks. And she emphasized the extent to which this guy splits the baby. He doesn't rule against the ACA. He's on the he's list not interested in because he's to going finish. to overturn, he doesn't overturn the Roe. The, the, he's not interested in overturning Roe. Well, state laws has, will make it overturned. Because he has a centrist but, philosophy and conservatives were very are we, are you kidding? I'm just no, allowed. you heard him. You heard him. He does not have a middle. Conservative philosophy don't don't, don't do that. You're, 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 you're headed right towards a man splitting. You don't don't say I'm trying to explain something to a woman when it has to do with reproductive health care. Don't I'm, ever do that. Because we are That's trying, not a good idea. No, so the notion we are presenting here is that this is well, the go down the road. of a murderous let's Nazi go. regime, which well, was just invoked. And I'm sorry that is an inaccurate and incendiary succession. Let's just... So he's trying to explain what Susan Collins' point was about temperament. No, 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 no. You're mansplaining. You're mansplaining. And he's like, wait a second. You people just compared Republicans to Nazis. And they're not here to, you know, yeah. so we have this talking point now that is bubbling up among journalists and, and left-wing activists, but I repeat myself, that the Senate is undemocratic and, and we've got to get rid of the Senate. So... The House now is bad because of gerrymandering, so it's illegitimate. The Supreme Court is bad now because Brett Kavanaugh, so it's illegitimate. Now the, the, the Senate is illegitimate. 
I mean, the agitation of these people, and now Democrats are saying we really, we've really got to get in their faces. We really got to take the gloves off. Uh, what are they going to do? Uh, try to a mass assassination of Republicans at a baseball? Oh wait, we, we they've already tried that. They, they've already tried mass assassinating Republicans. They're trying desperately to delegitimize everything, and, and you know this is the way it is with the Democrats: is that the rules work against them, and so the rules are unfair. The rules are only fair when it works to the Democrats' advantage. That's a real problem uh, for our civic discourse when Democrats are just convinced the system is illegitimate because it's working against them. Now, that's progressivism. I mean, th- this is – we've seen this from, from the communists. We've seen this from the fascists. We've seen this from the, the national socialists, on and on and on, on the democratic socialists now, that, that any system that doesn't work to their advantage is illegitimate. So one of the, the defining characteristics of, of progressivism is that a, any system they can't control is deemed an illegitimate system. And that's going to really have way more problems for our civil discourse. They could be embracing federalism and say, you know what, we want California to be a socialist utopia. We'll let Texas be Texas. But they don't want to do that because they know to to do what they want to do in California, they got to have the entire nation's checkbook to be able to pay for it. This doesn't end well for any of us, but it really doesn't end well for them. But th- there is a problem here the Democrats don't seem to grasp, and it's that Republicans have put the legwork in for 40 years to really start rebuilding re- the Republican Party at the s- local level, the county level, the state level, because they knew that would get them ultimately the federal level. The Democratic opposition has forever been to essentially claim that that they were the nation's majority party and they didn't have to do any work. And if Republicans were going to intercede or, or or interpose, then it was just it was a crisis. It was it was the worst thing ever. And people don't buy the worst thing ever rhetoric every week. What would it look like if we all listened more? Listening to audiobooks motivates us and inspires us, even brings us closer together. There's no better place to listen than Audible, because now Audible members get even more. Exclusive audio fitness programs, audiobooks, Audible Originals, and more. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now, with Audible Originals, the selections has gotten even more custom with content made for members. Every month, Audible members get one credit good for any audiobook they choose, plus two Audible originals from a changing selection that they can't get anywhere else. They also get access to audio fitness and health workouts created exclusively for Audible. Plus, your books are yours to keep. With Audible, you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. Didn't like your audiobook? Exchange it. No questions asked. Start a 30-day trial and get your first audiobook free. Go to audible.com slash Eric, remember E-R-I-C-K, or text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 500-500. You can do it with audiobooks. You can read audiobooks, except you listen. You don't actually read. Well worth it, particularly if you're stuck in the car, you got a long road trip. Audible is the way to go. So start your 30-day trial by going to audible.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K, or text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Eric, or text Eric to 500-500 to get started. We've got rain now. Brett Kavanaugh has been sworn in. Uh, He was sworn in. He got his constitutional oath from John Roberts, his uh, judicial oath from Anthony Kennedy, and he has now hired the first all-female law clerk team in the Supreme Court. It was a commitment he made to Congress that he would hire all women to be on his Supreme Court legal team. He has hired uh, one of the ladies' name is Kim Jackson. She will be one of only three black law clerks working in the Supreme Court. Uh, If he were a Democratic appointee, the media would be making a really big deal about this. But they're not because he's conservative. Now, I got to follow up with you guys. My wife has come back. Thank goodness. Uh, 1,234.3 miles on her motorcycle. She rode up to Tennessee. She's been on this Harley ride and she has come back. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. She is home safe and sound. Now, the president has had a rally earlier today. Uh, he was talking about getting out the vote. I want you to listen to this clip. Uh, he makes a fair point. You have to get your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers and get out and vote Republican. We need more people in D.C. We don't have enough. And the crowd went wild. Yeah, Republicans right now are feeling good. But there is a problem. I've talked now, and I didn't mean to have these conversations. They all just all kind of happen. One played off another uh, since last Friday or so with the polling coming out about Republican mobilization. And the question is, have Republican political consultants badly managed their money because they presumed that there was going to be a loss in November? And so they decided to cash in. And there are some concerns that some Republican political consultants have done that in some key states where they thought we weren't going to win, so they decided to cash in. I want to talk to you about that when we come back. It's 39 after the hour. Eric Erickson here. The phone number 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. Uh, real quick, I, so I, I've had these conversations with several strategists and consultants for the GOP, and uh, they're starting to raise alarm bells that many of the top strategists and consultants in the country who are actively involved in the congressional cycles this year. I don't know if people understand this, that oftentimes when a candidate wins a primary, the RNC or the DNC steps in and says, okay, now you have to use these vendors. Uh, you may have been, you want to you wanna ride the horse that brought you, but they say, nope, got to use our guys if you want us to invest. It's a shakedown. Both sides do it. I don't think people understand this. It happens. Well, there are other consultants who they, they don't involve themselves in that process. They're, they're with outside groups or whatnot. And several of the ones I've talked to are really concerned that uh, some of these major Republican consultants were so convinced that there was going to be the blue wave nationally everywhere that they spent a lot of money on TV and radio and mail and didn't spend enough money on ground game and door-to-door operations. The reason is because ground game and door-to-door operations do not pay consultant commissions typically. Uh, They're very expensive, and you don't really get a big commission for them. But on TV and radio and mail, particularly TV and radio, consultants make commissions. So you place an ad for your candidate, and the ad really costs $700. You bill them for $1,000. You get to take a commission for placing the ad for them. And when you got a bunch of consultants doing that, they're spending their money on extremely expensive TV and radio, particularly, and you know, I, this is bad for my business because I'm in radio, but if I was a campaign consultant today, I would be much more focused on door to door than I would be TV and radio because of, you want to knock on people's doors. You want to get their attention at home. Uh, you want your, you want to hire people who live in the area to show up or find volunteers to show up because door to door contact does a better job of persuading people than advertisements. Uh, the Democrats, for example, here in Georgia poured money into mail. They are whoever is running the democratic operation on mail is running is making a mint. They may not be doing great door to door operations, but they are going to make a killing in Georgia. The Republicans elsewhere, Florida and other States, Republican consultants are doing this, and it's to the candidate's detriment. Now, I want to go to the phones, 404-872-0750-1800, WSB Talk. Vic in Conyers, you're next. Welcome. Well, good afternoon. I'm enjoying your show. Thanks. I uh, I don't know if you remember who Caitlin Collins is. She's the CNN reporter that covers the White House. Yes. Well, apparently, uh, over the weekend, some anti-gay homophobic tweets have been discovered in her past. And she says that you shouldn't judge her today on what she did while she was in college. Yep. Well, isn't that what CNN's just been doing to Kavanaugh while he was in high school and college? Well, you know, so I'm torn on this one. And Vic, I get your point, but she's not up for the Supreme Court. She's a reporter. 
and CNN was passing along the news. I think there were a lot of people on CNN who behaved badly, particularly Chris Cuomo, giving Michael Avenatti uh, a big platform that actually worked to our advantage. But what did Caitlin Collins do? Are we just going after her because she works for CNN? I mean, is is there something that she in particular did that was wrong or bad or super partisan biased? Uh, I don't think that our ways are their ways, and I don't think we should be behaving like the leftists. Um, You know, there are a lot of people who are coming towards the right now. There are a lot of people who are persuaded to back Brett Kavanaugh because of the behavior of the left. And we're going to turn all those people off if we start behaving like the left. We're not like the left. So I I don't think we should go after Caitlin Collins. I I don't know her well, but I think very highly of her work. I thought by and large, she's been very, very fair. I have called her out several times for things I thought she did wrong, and I'm happy to call her out for those things. Uh, But I don't think just as I don't think we should be destroying Brett Kavanaugh over trumped up allegations from 30 years ago. I don't think we should be destroying reporters just because they work at CNN uh, because we're mad at CNN. Um, everybody should be treated as an individual and respected as such. We're all individuals made in the the image and likeness of God, not collectively, but individually. And we should show each other a little more grace, including these reporters. That That's my view. Um, your view may vary, but I hope not because we've been persuading people to flee the left by not behaving like the left. And we'll lose all those people if we start behaving like the left. All right. Um, what was I, I got thrown off by, by phone calls and, and Caitlin also, yo, I just, I really don't like the, the tit for tat and I don't like to engage in it. Uh, I don't think it's very Christian, frankly, um, that we should, I mean, this goes to turning the other cheek. I, I, I don't think that conservatives should engage in the behavior of the left. And there are a lot of people on the right who disagree with me now and think, oh, Trump fights, Trump fights, we should fight, we should be just as nasty. But but the polling shows more and more Americans are being turned off by that. And because they're being turned off by it, we, even the president, are using it to our advantage of persuading people to come to us. And I think if we act uh, like the left and try to destroy people because of things they did 30 years ago, that it's going to end up badly for all of us. Uh, everybody has things in their life that 30 years ago they did that they probably shouldn't have done or they've changed their mind. And, and we are denying people the ability over time to change their minds, to grow up, to mature, to, to do anything by trying to ruin people for that is what the left did to Brett Kavanaugh. And we were also opposed to the left doing it to Brett Kavanaugh. I don't think we should now say, oh, they, they did it to us. We're going to do it to them. Well, then we're acting like children and conservatives, Republicans should not operate like children. That's what the left does. And that's why grown-up voters are rejecting them. It is 55 after the hour. I am Eric Erickson. This is Atlanta's Evening News. I'm not going to take any more phone calls. Why? Because we're almost out of time. So I want to talk about a technology story that's actually relevant to everything else. So what was I going to say? I had a total brain fart. I know what I was going to say. Apple and Bloomberg. So this is a relevant story to the Kavanaugh situation. Uh, Bloomberg News has run a pretty sensational story uh, that Apple, Amazon, and several other companies whose computer processor motherboards were made in China were having a chip put on their motherboards. And the chip was very tiny. If you weren't paying attention to it, it was smaller than a grain of rice. And it was letting the Chinese essentially hack the servers and spy on the companies and the information going through the motherboards. Very big deal. And a number of companies have been very quiet about the Bloomberg story. They haven't said anything. But Apple and Amazon have both come out swinging and denied it. Apple in particular is vehement that the story is not true, that they did do business with the company that's being reported. They did stop doing business with the company, but it had absolutely nothing to do with what Bloomberg speculates on. The Department of Homeland Security has come out and backed up Apple and Amazon. Um, the FBI has done it, and now British intelligence has come out and, and backed them up as well. So they have no idea what Bloomberg is talking about. Bloomberg, meanwhile, is standing behind the story. All of its sources are anonymous. This is so much like the political attacks we're seeing now. These are people attacking companies, driving down their stock prices. For what? Makes you wonder about responsibility in the press these days. 